Hello everyone and welcome to my latest SQL Server Quickie. Today I want to talk about SQL Server availability groups and high availability technology which was introduced back with SQL Server 2012, so already a very very long time ago. The first step I want to describe you with a PowerPoint slide what the basic idea about availability groups in SQL Server is and then we will switch over to SQL Server Management Studio and I will show you how you can work with availability groups in SQL Server. One of the greatest features of SQL Server availability groups is the possibility that you can have multiple databases in one availability group. When you think back to database mirroring, with database mirroring you only had the possibility to mirror one database in one mirroring session. And with availability groups we can now put multiple databases in one availability group and that availability group can be spread across multiple so-called replicas. You have two kinds of replicas with an availability group. You have a primary replica, there's always only one primary replica and the primary replica always serves your read and write workload. Therefore also the name primary replica. And then you can have up to eight different additional secondary replicas. And those secondary replicas can also serve your read workload. So this is very, very important because with a secondary replica you can offload some workload from your primary replica. For example, when you think about reporting and so on, you can make your reporting on a secondary replica. SQL Server even supports to perform database backups on a secondary replica. So in sum, we have one primary replica and up to eight additional secondary replicas. So in sum, we have nine replicas. You have also an integrated HA management within SQL Server. So for example SQL Server Management Studio provides you a dashboard which gives you an overview uh, about the performance of your availability group, if the replicas are online, offline and so on. I will also show you that one uh, in the demonstration. And of course SQL Server itself provides you a lot of different dynamic management views and dynamic management functions with which you can further troubleshoot the operation of an availability group. Availability groups itself are based on Windows Server failover clustering when you run them on Windows. You can even run availability groups on Linux. It works. Trust me, I've already tried that. Maybe I will talk about that one in an upcoming SQL Server quickie. So if you are running an availability group on Windows, normally you run an availability group with Windows Server failover clustering because with Windows Server failover clustering you have the possibility for automatic failovers. One very very important key fact here is the fact that you don't need a shared storage for an availability group. So this is a huge difference to the traditional uh, SQL Server failover clustering. With a SQL Server failover clustering you always had the requirement for a shared storage. With an availability group you just need your Windows Server failover cluster as an umbrella and you are just working with local direct attached storage. So you don't need shared storage when you are working with SQL Server availability groups. This is also very very important. And beginning with SQL Server 2016 and of course all upcoming versions of SQL Server, you even don't need a Windows Server failover cluster anymore. You even don't need an Active Directory infrastructure. I have written here some years ago a blog posting how to set up a whole availability group without 
the dependency to Windows Server Failover clustering and the dependency to an Active Directory infrastructure. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio and I want to show you now how you can work with availability groups in SQL Server. Let's have a look now on how SQL Server availability groups are actually working in SQL Server. I have here three different uh, SQL Server virtual machines where I have installed SQL Server 2022, the latest release of SQL Server. And as I have said previously uh, during the PowerPoint slide, the first prerequisite when you are working on Windows is that you need a Windows Server failover cluster installed if you want to use the functionality of automatic failovers. So as you can see, I have here a role called test AG. That one is automatically created by SQL Server when you create an availability group within SQL Server. And I have here three different nodes registered. So each virtual machine where SQL Server is running is here one node within that uh, Windows Server failover cluster. As I have also said previously, it is very, very important that availability groups don't need any shared storage. So as you can see here, when we are going uh, to the storage tab within the failover cluster manager, you can see that I have no shared storage configured within the Windows Server failover cluster. This is very, very important. So when you are working with storage, you are working with local attached or direct attached storage. So in my case, those virtual machines are running on VMware Phosphere, means I'm using in the background virtual disks, VMDK files. And for example, as you can see, I have here the E drive and on the E drive, I have all my SQL Server data and transaction log stored. So as you can see I have here my MDF files for the various databases that I have created and also the various log files. But there is no shared storage involved. This is very very important. Another prerequisite when you are running availability groups uh, on Windows Server failover clustering is that you have to enable that within SQL Server Configuration Manager. As you can see, we are here on the SQL Server properties and you have here that uh, register card always on availability groups. And as you can see, you have to enable always on availability groups because availability groups are by default just always off. So always on availability groups are just off by default. When you have checked uh, that option, when you have enabled it, you also need a whole restart of the SQL Server service. So those are the prerequisites. It means I have done that on all three SQL Server installations. Let's go now to SQL Server Management Studio. As you can see, I'm having here two databases and those two databases are part of an availability group which I have already created. We have here that folder always on high availability. So when we open that, we can see we have that availability group. I have called that test AG. I'm currently connected to my primary replica. As I have said previously, you can only have one primary replica and then you can have up to eight additional secondary replicas. We can also see those replicas here. So you see SQL node 1 is currently my primary replica and SQL node 2 and node 3 are currently my secondary replicas. You can see the databases which are part of that replica. So my test database 1 and 2 which we see here in that synchronized state, those databases are part of that availability group. In addition, you can also create a so-called availability group listener 
which is nothing more like a virtual network name and the idea behind that availability group listener is that it transparently routes you always to your current primary replica. Imagine in that case, currently, node 1 is our primary replica. If you perform a failover from node 1 to node 2, node 2 is afterwards your primary replica, means your read and write workload has to connect to node 2 means your connection string would change. And therefore, you can abstract the primary replica through the listener. means your applications are connecting to the listener. Each listener has a virtual network name and an associated IP address. You specify that one in your connection string and the listener just routes you in a transparent way to your current primary replica. So this is also very, very important when you're working with applications. And in addition, when we go here now to our availability group itself, right click, you have now the dashboard. Means the dashboard gives you now information about the state and the health of your availability group. So you can see here on the top you have the state, it's currently healthy, green, that's great. You can see what is your primary replica. In my case the primary replica is currently SQL node 1. You see the failover mode which is here automatic means when node 1 would crash or maybe when we are restarting node 1 because we are installing Windows updates or something, SQL Server would trigger an automatic failover to another secondary replica. So this is also very, very powerful. You see here information about your cluster state. So we are running here with Windows Server failover clustering. As I've said previously, even when you are running availability groups, you can run when you run availability, availability groups on Linux, you can have a failover support. On Linux, you have the so-called Basemaker technology, and the Basemaker technology is also a clustering technology like Windows Server failover clustering. Then you see here the different uh, replicas. So currently we have three replicas. SQL Node 1 is our primary replica. SQL node 2 and 3 are currently our secondary replicas. You see availability mode, SQL Server supports two different availability modes, synchronous commit and asynchronous commit. You see your failover mode, a so-called seeding mode, and very, very important, the synchronization state. An automatic failover can only happen for your availability group when the synchronization state is synchronized. So this is also very, very important. If your availability group, for example, is in the state synchronizing, it's not up to date with your primary replica and then an automatic failover could not happen. So this is also very important. And then you see the state of your individual databases on each replica. So we have here replica node 1, node 2 and on node 3. So that's the basic idea about availability groups. Let's perform for example a failover. Let's say we want to perform a failover from node 1 to node 2. So let's go here to node 2 and let's perform a failover. So let's say we want to fail over to node 2. As you can see, we have here the so-called failover readiness because the replica is in the synchronized state. We also don't have <coughs> any data loss. This is also important because when you perform a failover, of course, you don't want to lose any of your transactions which have happened in the past. So we have to connect to node 2. Let's do that. And then we just hit finish. And now <coughs> SQL Server Management Studio 
performs the failover. Takes a few seconds, everything was completed successfully. And when we just reopen the dashboard, let's do that. <coughs> when we reopen the dashboard, we can't see here any information, which also makes sense. I'm currently on node 1. Node 1 was previously my primary replica, but currently node 2 is my primary replica. Means we are showing now that dashboard in the context of a secondary replica. And of course the secondary replica only sees the information about itself. So let's connect to our current primary replica, which is SQL node 2. And now when we go to the dashboard on our primary replica, we again see more information. One replica, the third one is currently not yet synchronizing, just takes a few seconds until that uh, warning is also resolved automatically by SQL Server. Here you can already see quite nicely why it's very, very cool and great to work with a listener because the listener just routes you, as I have said, in a transparent way to your current primary replica. And maybe you are wondering here why my SQL Server Management Studio is so dark. Normally, as we know, SQL Server Management Studio doesn't support out of the box a dark mode. I really like a dark mode and therefore I have installed here a tool called SQL Shades which is from Michael van Tewanda. I hope I have uh, pronounced uh, his name correctly. I think so. So if you are interested in a dark mode within uh, SQL Server Management Studio, just check out his website sqlshades.com. Highly recommend it if you are working with SQL Server Management Studio. And as you see, in the meantime, everything is resolved and our Node 2 is now our primary replica. So that's the basic idea about availability groups in SQL Server. I hope that you have enjoyed today's SQL Server quickie about SQL Server availability group. As you have seen, throughout this video, SQL Server Availability Groups are a really great and powerful technology that SQL Server provides you for high availability. If you want to learn more about SQL Server Availability Groups, I highly recommend to check out my online training about it, where I'm talking more than seven hours just about availability groups. So thanks for watching, stay tuned and see you next about the next topic in SQL Server. Thank you.